there's only two things in life that really seem guaranteed. And, and for me, that is we're all going to get older and there's going to be an over tonight on Thursday night football. What's going on, folks, and welcome in to Monkey Night Fights Thursday Night Football Show. I'm your man, Connor Rountree, joined today by Jim Coventry. Jim, what an opening week, and I guess the takeaway is I need to become an NFL kicker. Oh, my gosh, yes, that is the way to do it. But you know what? How about a long snapper? Evan McPherson misses the game-winning point, but the long snapper was hurt, and that's why they missed the field or the extra point, I think. But, yes, become a kicker. Win big, make money, and don't get hit a lot. Yeah, well, we were just talking about coming on air, and there's only two things in life that really seem guaranteed. And, and for me, that is we're all going to get older, and there's going to be an over tonight on Thursday night football. We've got the Chargers. We've got the Chiefs, a little divisional rivalry. And it all really starts with the quarterbacks. I'm kind of excited. Let's just jump right into it. Patrick Mahomes, 360 yards last week with five tutties. Man, he takes on a Chargers defense that was able to sack Derek Carr six times last week and pick him off on a trio of occasions without J.C. Jackson, who could be back Thursday night. On the other side of the ball, you got Justin Herbert, 279 yards, a 129.4 passer rating. Jim, before I dish this to you, I'm taking the more and the more on the quarterback matchup in this slugfest in the AFC. I imagine that you're going to get me pretty good here because – Man, I, I'm really not a pessimist, and I really love high explosive offenses, but I think these numbers are coming in as less, and I, I need to explain why. So Patrick Mahomes, I know he had a great week one. It was insane. But when did the Cardinals not realize you cannot – blitz Patrick Mahomes they blitz him over 40 percent of the time they were and they were without their corner Trayvon Mullen J.J. Watt was out we know that Chandler Jones is in Las Vegas and so not only were they like a depleted team but they did exactly what was going to get them crushed and so now we come in and Mahomes is facing off with this Kansas and it's, I'm sorry it's Los Angeles Chargers defense and I'm telling you this defense even without J.C. Jackson, is loaded. They could get pressure without blitzing. Khalil Mack was insane, and Joey Bosa right along with him. And they can play a zone defense that can make it real tight for Mahomes to throw. I think the problem is going to be there's not going to be yardage after the catch here. I think that that secondary, the safety play is so good. We have Derwin James, Nasir Adderley, and I don't think there's big yardage after the catch. And I think Mahomes completes his passes, but I don't think there's big plays coming here. And we know Brandon Saley's going to put that shell over the top to keep that from happening. So Mahomes going to have to dink and dunk, and I think they may run the ball a little bit more. So that's my take on Mahomes. And what a, what a, what's your read on Herbert to counter that? So if you saw last week and even last year, just so many short throws. They don't a they don't have a deep receiver. Mike Williams can do it but they didn't ask him to. And Jalen Guyton, who would be their deep threat, he rarely sees the field. And ultimately, they're happy to live with this great strong-arm quarterback throwing short. And the big plays just are there. And now Keenan Allen's not going to play. That's going to compress the target share even closer. How many times are they throwing downfield? And so I think also this is a game where they could get a lot of traction with the run. I think Austin Eckler as a runner could be really, really explosive here. So I think we get points here, but I think both teams can do it with balance. I don't think we're going to see complete pass heavy game scripts. I think we're going to see a little more balance here. And I think that's what's going to drive the tuck, the yardage for both of these quarterbacks to the less. Wow. Honestly, I'm, I'm sticking with the passing game. Just based off of what I saw from Herbert last week, he, he evaded every single sack opportunity. He was sacked zero. No sacks given up last week. Both quarterbacks completed. It was some dinking and dunking. I will give you that. Both quarterbacks completed over 76% of their passes. Based off numbers that I'm seeing projection and past history of these two teams squaring up, I, I got to take the Moors. And one of the things that I want to note uh, if we bring up Travis Kelsey, I know he's on a rundown here, his more and less. A lot of people were kind of, uh, let's say, fading the Chiefs offense, expecting decline. They literally took those Tyreek 
wheel routes across the field, change up big routes across the field, anything. And they just did them with Travis Kelsey last week, a much bigger target. And while there may not be yak yards this week from catching and juking, it's going to be tough to bring down Travis Kelsey. So I, I see the more here for Travis Kelsey for sure. Now, last year, Connor, we look at Travis Kelsey's stat line in the second matchup against the Chargers, and he demolished them. But what a lot of people don't remember is this. He was literally close to being shut out into the third quarter, and then Derwin James got hurt. The way they approach that game, and they haven't done that with many of their games. James will play a lot of zone. They'll move him around. But when they play the Chiefs, they put him on Kelsey, and he shut Kelsey down. Once the injury happened, I think Kelsey had 180 yards between the fourth quarter and overtime. If they go with that route again, Derwin James is an ace defender. He's not going to give Mahomes a window to throw. So like you said, there's not going to be yak here. And I think Kelsey could catch eight balls and not get 84 yards here. So again, the cold water guy is going to go less again. I got, I, you're, you're breaking down my good Thursday vibes. I had a great I workout this morning. I oh, went uh, at the gym. It's Tiff in Toronto. I ran into Hugh Jackman the other day. I just ran into Chase Crawford. I'm on top of the world, and you're coming in here and taking less on my mm-hmm. fantasy tight end. No way Travis Kelsey goes for less than 84 and a half yards. Not in a divisional matchup. Not when Patrick Mahomes doesn't have Tyreek Hill. I'm taking the more. Just like last week, I took the more on Cooper Cup. I got to take it, Jim. I got to go against you. As for Austin Eckler, I actually think there will be holes on the ground. I think that more of the screen passing setups and that dinking and dunking will open up holes for Eckler. So I do think that we could agree that more on the 55 and a half for Austin Eckler on the ground. Are you comfortable with that one, Jim? We really needed to have some agreement here because I like your takes. I see where you're coming from and I totally get it. And here we're seeing the same thing. Yes, Eckler's going to have room to run. And I'm not worried about his limited workload last week. I really think they knew a short week divisional game was coming up. And I really think they spelled him to keep him fresh for this game. It's a smaller back. I think he'll be raring to go here. And yeah, if he doesn't get 90 yards rushing in this game, I'd be surprised. We could see one run of 35 or 40 yards on its own. So all over Austin Eckler. And again, no Keenan Allen. And that really helps him as well. Yeah, well, that's one of the guys I wanted to mention. No Keenan Allen, Keenan Allen in the lineup. Pardon me. One guy that didn't get going at all last week, Mike Williams. Shocking. His performance last week was appallingly terrible. But it was mainly because Herbert was spreading out the ball to so many different receivers. This week, without Keenan Allen, the hamstrings bugging him. He's out. I think they have to get Mike Williams involved. You said earlier, he's been their deep target. He's been that guy over the last season, season and a half or so to take that deep shot. I like him to get the more on that line because, as I said, I'm projecting more of a pass-heavy game script. But if you're going to stretch the field, Mike Evans is your guy. Agree with you completely on that. The weird thing last week was there was no – Chargers receiver with more than four targets, seven different players had exactly four targets. Now, Keenan Allen would have gone over that because he had four in the quarter and a half he played before leaving. But that said, that was very surprising. Now, that said, in this game, big divisional game, they're going to have to score points to win. You mentioned it. Mike Williams needs to be used downfield. It will take one catch for him to get close to the 50 yard mark. And I do think he sails over to 70 yard marker. I think he goes into triple digits here. Yeah, I definitely think he, he breaks a hundred here. I guess I, I accidentally said Mike Evans there at some point. I meant Mike Williams the entire way. Mike Evans definitely showed up. He plays for the Buccaneers, completely different guy, completely different team. Both play wide receiver though. I meant Mike Evans, folks. I know what I'm talking about, believe it or not. Maybe not. Moving on down the line now, Edwards Hilaire. I think that this one is interesting because I'm actually going to take the less on him based off of the the running back conglomerate I saw last week. You had a rookie getting involved. You had McKinnon getting involved. Three different running backs getting touches. I just the, – the, will the workload be there for 45 and a half yards against – a very tenacious defensive front for the Chargers. I don't think so. I think 45 rush yards is more than capable for this Kansas City team. I'm just not sure about Edwards Hilaire's usage at this point in the season. So I'm going to take the less on that. 
So, Connor, I think the one thing that fantasy managers need to understand is the box score last week told a bit of a lie. We saw that Isaiah Pacheco led in carries. He led in yards. He only had two of those carries while the game was in question. The other 10 came when the blowout was on. The starters were mostly out of the game. So Isaiah Pacheco is a deep number three. Now, you're right. Jarek McKinnon is a factor here. Clyde Edwards Hilaire looked very, very good last week. Now, they're, they're facing a defense in the Chargers that last year they were were the worst in the league right there against the run, but they did make significant upgrades. They had Austin Johnson and Sebastian Jones a day at, at defensive tackle. And Khalil Mack is an excellent run defender, but they still gave up 57 yards on 10 carries to Josh Jacobs with a horrible blocking offensive line. Clyde edwards Hilaire will get 10 to 12 carries here. And honestly, with that many carries, he will likely go over that number because this defense still has a lot of things to figure out against the run. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the breakdown. It makes a lot of sense to me. It just, I, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's just such an early season. I'd be comfortable with that more. It's not, it's not the biggest number, but again, I just, I'm excited for points to get on the board, Jim. And that's why it's time to do, I think both of our favorite, our favorite part of the show, really. Let's get a touchdown dance going Thursday night. We're feeling good. We're feeling right. I'm, let me just start off by saying Travis Kelsey is going to hit pay dirt. 100% with you on that counter. I have him as one of my three here. Kelsey will be used around the goal line. Absolutely. He has a good physical style that will get him open in that tight space. The other two, Austin Eckler is fine in the end zone. I don't know if it's through the air or on the ground, but he is scoring tonight. And the other one, look, Mike Williams, we have no... Keenan Allen, Mike Williams should see in the neighborhood of eight to 10 targets. He is a big factor, a big body in the red zone. And I don't think the Chiefs have a body to hold up with him in that area of the field. So that's my touchdown dance. Eckler, Williams, and Kelsey. Wow. We have the exact same touchdown dance. One guy that I, would, uh, I wouldn't mind plugging in there, though, is Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. He got off to a hot start of the season in that first quarter. Uh, put up one or two touchdowns last week. So... I mean, the guy finds pay dirt close to the goal line. Travis Kelsey, obviously a massive target for Patrick Mahomes. As we said, they're finding new ways to use him. Andy Reid is just, well, he fits the role of the nutty professor. He looks it, he's got the glasses, and, and he gets it done on the field with, with the scheming. I'm just still amazed that they were able to take a the small speedster Tyreek Hill and use those drag routes with effect, with the effectivity that they did last week by plugging in the tight end, Travis Kelsey. And until more teams see that and get that look, I think it's going to take a while for teams to adjust to that. That's why I'm on the more for Kelsey. That's why I like him to get paid dirt. Austin Eckler, whether it's on the ground or through the air, as you said, I like him to get at least over, at least 100 yards combined from, from the line of scrimmage. And then, yeah, Mike Williams, but the deep shot for Herbert. I think there are are going to be a couple of deep looks here. We saw Herbert and Mahomes stare each other down last year. I think this is one of the one of the foundations of one of those great quarterback battles, grow, you know, divisional quarterback battles. When I was growing up, they weren't necessarily in the same division, but when Tom Brady and Peyton Manning played, everyone stopped what they were doing and focused yes. on the AFC. These two guys have the caliber, they have the arm, and they are they're just pure gunslingers fun to watch and I think that they both have that tenacious side we saw Mahomes given the the four tutty sign last week after the four he went for five Justin Herbert he's a baller and he wants to prove that his chargers are the top dogs in that division Jim who are you predicting on Thursday night football you know, we mentioned earlier the Chargers and the lean on Austin Eckler and, of course, Justin Herbert, as you mentioned in this game. I think overall the Chiefs will get a little bit impatient. I think that this Brandon Staley defense is going to force him to take what's underneath. And, and Mahomes is just going to want to, like you said, he's going to want a gunsling. He's going to want this nationally televised divisional game against Herbert. He's going to want to go downfield. But that defense isn't going to allow that to happen. And he's going to start to make some mistakes. So I think the Chargers not only are going to – win plus the four and a half. I think they have a good chance of winning on the money line here. Yeah. Wow. Hot take little, little look for me. I just want to sit back and watch points. I'm firing with the over. I love the chargers pick because I picked them to win the division at the start of the season. I think they just put too many defensive pieces together and man, I'm excited for that defense. When JC Jackson gets on the field, I think Patrick Mahomes is going to have a tough time finding receivers. As you said, 
But then again, he's Patrick Mahomes. Yes, 100%. It is Patrick Mahomes, and I can't wait to see this game either. I do hope this game hits the over. Last year, again, when they played in that that late-season matchup, this game was very heavily trending under until Der Derwin James went out with that injury, and then the whole defense fell apart and the game went off the rails. But I do think that we are going to see an incredible performance by the defense. I, like I said, I love points, but I do th think this one, 54 and a half is the number that I saw. I think it doesn't hit that. I think it goes under. I'm gonna I'm gonna take I, I'm gonna take the over on that still. Uh, I think I I had I saw it at 54. 54 and a half is more than doable from these two quarterbacks with the with the weapons around them. Keenan Allen or not, Tyreek Hill or not, these quarterbacks I just have so much faith in them, and it's gonna be an exciting matchup. Jim, let the people know where they can find you online and all your great content. Yeah, thank you. You can find me on Twitter at Jim Coventry NFL. You can catch me on Sirius XM, the fantasy sports channel. I'm on every Saturday from 1 to 3 Eastern. And you can also catch me on Sunday mornings from 9 to 10 Eastern. And then I do a start, a start stit live stream on the RotoWire YouTube page, Sunday mornings, two hours before kickoff. Catch me at any of those places. Perfect. Jim, thank you so much for joining us today on our preview for Thursday Night Football. Folks, enjoy the football, and we'll see you next week.